I'll tell you who it is you had them preach to. And I was crushed. See how quite that's such a theologian. I wrote them on the text. I said, you should give all the money you took from revivals back to the church. Because he admits, I took appointments, but I didn't fully believe what I was doing. And y'all are looking funny. This thing is spreading. They had a particular video with... Uh, Dr. Caesar and Carolyn, Elder Carol was sitting next to her and they were at an event and it went viral and they called me about it and when they were up talking they made an introduction and Pastor Caesar they tried to put words in her mouth, she looked and said what? And she ain't the only one who looked like that if you see something going on in church that you have never seen allowed in your day, your mama's day, your grandmama's day, y'all quiet. Why would y'all start accepting it now? A very authentic, intelligent, saged man of seven in his 70s said to me on yesterday. He said, I talk to you because you make sense. I said, yes, sir. Very intelligent man. I said, thank you. He said to me, why do you believe in Jesus and the way that people are having church? He asked. He was not being fa facetious. Am I, am I boring, y'all? Because some of you don't have answers for these questions. And it's bad when you've been saved so long and still have no answers. He asked me, and this is what I told him to help some of you that are novice right now that soon will become uh, 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 more, more mature in the faith. This was my answer after being saved in Holy Ghost field for 42 years, and I'm hoping one of you jump that will help me get strength. I told him, I in, let me finish, I inherited my father's God. I said, anyone who took care of my parents and their parents and their parents is the God I'm going to continue to serve. Because when you first hear about it, they call him the God of Abraham. Then they call him the God of Abraham and Isaac. How do you identify your God? And I refuse to desecrate my ancestors because somebody who does not study but steals came up with a new interpretation of salvation. Jesus, some of my seasoned folk ain't talking. There's a hell. Don't say you didn't hear it, okay? There's a hell. Young people, don't say you never heard it. You ain't getting out of it when you go. And I say this concerning my faith. Then when I read this and pick up the pace, y'all will be excited. I did not, and Dr. Caesar, don't judge me yet. I call you doctor now. I did not get saved to go to heaven. I did not. I got saved not to go to hell. Let me say it one more time. Don't y'all get me wrong and judge me. I don't care, but y'all not talking to me. I've not heard too many preachers effectively preach heaven to the point where I'm excited. But the way the old saints talked about hell, I could feel the fire creeping up my back, burning. my. I, I, I just... I don't. Well, I'm trying to make sense of your faith so you don't get fooled by the stuff that's going around. When they start saying hell is not an actual place, ferno means this. Y'all got to be careful letting professional liars 
mess, mess with your rookie faith. Faith cometh, y'all ain't talking by hearing. But how does hearing come? So if you stop going to church and you don't have a pastor and you don't actually read the book, how in the world do you stand on your faith? You that are talking to me, I love you. But let me set preface. Romans 10, verses 13 through 17. Romans 10, Romans 10, 13 through 17. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, y'all talk in that corner, shall be saved. But then it says, how then shall they even call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe, y'all are missing the buildup, in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear... say this correctly to you who are a little more mature and a little more vocal at poignant points that need some type of verbal confirmation and that is this if the devil's new plot is to kill the influence of the preacher once you kill the voice of the preacher you kill what the audience hears oh yeah so if church folks start having a disrespect for leadership and they can no longer hear what the leader has to say, then what Jesus are you actually serving? How can you hear in whom you have not believed? How you can believe in whom you have not heard? How can they hear? And how, verse 15, give me some more volume here. How shall they preach? We're going to do a sound check for preachers. Except they be sent. Let me tell you what it does not say for two folk will jump. How can they preach except they be perfect? How can they preach except they be spotless? It said sent. Then it says, as it is written. I wish my church would catch this. How beautiful are the feet of them. Oh, see, the world don't want us to defend leadership anymore. But I ain't going to be one of your pastors like these new ones that sit down because of something they did 22 years ago. I, I, I did a disservice when I was 27. Man, you 73. Is it that bad that if it comes out, it's only that bad because two things may have happened. You made folk believe you were perfect. Or, yeah. or Satan was strategic enough to hold it until you had enough to lose. Because a thief only comes to steal. Can't steal what you don't have. Kill. Can't kill what you didn't birth. Destroy. This, he needs you to reach a certain level. I'm going to talk to my folks. Anyone being attacked from something in, in your past is because your future is threatening. Lord, I should have stayed in Detroit, but I love these people. I got to influence myself of that. It is written... How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Not of confusion. Not anger. Not personal opinion. Y'all are quiet. Of peace. And bring not bad tidings. Why y'all not reading the Bible? Good, glad tidings of good things. Exclamation point. And then it tells you for two folks screen, they have not all obeyed the gospel. No, 
He's talking about the preacher. Maybe y'all missed it. Let's all the feet of them. How can he hear without a preacher? Then it says their, their whole ministry should be around good things, glad things to come. But that the person following them needs to be sure to know they have not all obeyed the gospel. Let me talk to three and I only let uh, Dr. Shirley Caesar beat me in the office. Can't nobody live all of this? All of it? Some of you are not delivered. You aged out. If you live long enough, there'll be some things you don't do because you can't do it no more. But go back to your more vibrant. Your more active days. Touch someone, make that your partner, tell them, let's just keep it real here tonight. Let's just keep it real. They have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? I'm almost there. Then it says your favorite verse. You can't read this verse and leave out the others. It says after you understand verses 10 through 16, then you can start articulating so then faith. It tells you, y'all, and my church in the middle, I sense the spirit in this middle section. I feel you right now. But let me tell you what it says. Faith coming by hearing, but what it's saying is you can't choose who you hear it from. And hearing by the word of God. As long as who's preaching is not manipulating the text or using sorcery, you don't look at their whole life. You look at what the word of God tells you. Because at the end of the day, they can go to hell and you can still go to heaven. There are some preachers going to hell. Hate to announce that. Pastors, bishops, praise and worship leaders, choir directors, assistant pastors, overseer, old school missionary saints and friends. And you liking them can't get them out of there. They're going because of something they heard that they refused to obey. I heard it. It was explained properly but I don't like it. When you live by faith, you live less by feelings. All of you that are highly emotional, your faith is suffocating. Let me say it again. All of you that are highly emotional, you are strangling your faith. Faith tells three people who will jump, get over it. Get back to your focus. I don't hear nobody. Purify your heart. Keep on pressing. So then faith is, so that verse is simply trying to tell us there is no faith if you can't accept this process. You don't have faith without the desire to hear someone tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. A real friend is a person who will tell you the truth and even defend you in front of others. They might even agree with your enemies, but what makes them not an enemy is they're telling you for your benefit, not for your destruction. If that hairdo is ugly to the secular world and the church, don't be offended. Change it. I don't do nothing to fit in. Well, how do you socialize if there's nowhere in the world that you fit? 
Why would God let anyone be born on a planet where they don't fit? Am I boring y'all again? Like, again, I'm boring y'all. That word, but hearing by the word of God, y'all know on Wednesday we go deeper and deeper every 12 minutes. So let me go here. That word, word, is the word rhema. Write it. R-H-E-M-A, rhema. A lot of people use it, but they use it in the wrong context. They try to show you that they're deep. This is the logos, the written word, the logistical word of God. This is how God thinks. That's logic. But then the word becomes flesh and dwell among us. And as it walks, the word said, I must go away. But then he said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Oh, y'all don't. So you that don't read the Bible, you actually have no relationship with God. Now, I know you don't know that. I know you don't know it. And if you don't know how to handle the scripture, you are mishandling him. Whenever you can't take the scripture for what it says, you are inadvertently telling God, I can't take you. Why are y'all quiet? God and his word are the same in the beginning. Y'all know we don't play. Was the word and the word was with God and was God. And without him was nothing made that was made. Then we beheld him as the only begotten son of God. Born of the father, etc, 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 etc. If you ever want to know what spirit is in a person, let them talk. If you want to know whether they're highly emotional, disagree with something petty and see how they take it. Then you got to tell them that ain't what I mean. I don't care what you meant. That person is danger to the faith. Thank you, Berlin. That particular person or people are a danger to your faith. That word is rhema. Thea's definition, that word rhema, Dr. Tracy and Dr. Deborah love this kind of stuff. And if you did, you would say you do. So if I don't say your name, don't get so emotional, okay? They ain't the only two. You ain't the one because you emotional. That's how easy it is to be offended. Because you're not here to hear your name. You are here to eat what we're preaching. But if I feel like calling a name, that's my choice. Doesn't mean that you're not valuable. That word rhema and I want you to hear the simple definition that's going to take us to the next level for two people is that which is or has been uttered by a living voice. All right, I'm about to make a statement by a living voice. We have a lot of people who watch us, so y'all got a lot to talk about. By a living voice, things that are spoken by a human being. Here's... My statement for me to find out who missed me in the spirit and who wants to grow. Hearing from God on your own or outside of understanding his written word does not lead to faith. It leads to your fate. You who say fool things like I heard God say, I need to separate from them. If you don't have scripture and a leader that solidifies your emotions God does not speak outside of his terms now folk are mad that are emotional because you actually believe you've been hearing from God outside of the order that God has set in place I 
I didn't write it. I'm exposing you to the commentary. And some of you are offended. I know God speaks to me every day. Then why are you worried about money? Can't find a job. Don't know how you're going to pay your rent. What you and God talking about? Just leaving somewhere? Cutting somebody off? That's all God talks to you about? He ain't talked to you about a job or how you married the wrong person or how you got pregnant. He didn't tell you, don't touch him tonight, you're going to get pregnant. God didn't talk to you when you needed him to talk. But he talked to you about who's got a demon, who ain't right, who to stay away from. I'm sure there's more pertinent things you need God to speak to you about. That was not God speaking. That was your emotional on 10. Your emotions on 10. And some of you won't talk because it's too deep. You want God to agree with you. Instead of you obeying what he already wrote. To change the Bible is to find a new God. Will you tell somebody that? To change the Bible is for you to find a new God. Look at your neighbor left and right. Keep your eyes up front and tell them stay with God. Let me read this one more time. Hearing from God on your own, outside of the understanding of his written word, the Logos, does not lead to an increase in faith. It leads to your fate. Then once you get in a jam, you need someone with more mature faith to talk you out of what you're in. And most of the time, it's the same one that told you not to do a certain thing. Now you feel idiotic. Y'all talk to me in the hood. That you got to go back to the same source. And what I hate and wish I'd have listened when I was a child. I hate it for me to grow up and have to say these words for three folk who will jump. And that is, I wish I'd have listened. I hate it. I hate telling my parents, you were right. I, I just. Why do we have to keep continuing learning from our mistakes? Why can't we learn from our success? Mistakes cost. I'm mad with y'all again, but mistakes cost. Bishop, why are you upset? Because y'all don't know when to talk. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by ignoring. Right there. Faith, F-A-I-T-H, cometh by hearing. Faith, F-A-T-E, cometh by ignoring. It's crazy that God was Adam's sauce. Who was Adam's sauce? See, I like to see who's listening when I come back. Who was Adam sauce? He was so much Adam sauce that he actually pointed out to Adam what not to do. Hey. And the day you do it, y'all don't hear me. This is what occurs. Now, some of y'all ain't going to say amen in the back. And God didn't let them ask why I can't eat it. When you want to be mature, you don't ask a lot of questions because the questions mean you want to do it. You're asking questions because you actually want to experience what you should leave alone. So why you don't like him? He seemed to be all right. Do you know him? You're doing that because you're defending your curiosity. My father said when I was young, Todd, don't go outside. 
Dad, why not? Because I don't want you to go outside. Just listen to me because I want you to be safe. And I would be upset with the father all day. I'm stuck in the house looking out the window. My friend's having a good time playing basketball. And I'm considering disobeying the father because I know he won't be home till after work. So I'm going to zoom. I see y'all don't want to say amen again, right? So I'm out there doing my little thing. But if I go to my grandmama's house and she quick and don't go outside, I'll be like, something ain't right. Grandma said don't go outside. I'm not going outside. I didn't have the same reverence for my dad as I did for my granddad or my grandmother. What I'm saying to two screamers is some of you don't obey because you don't respect the leader. Now, this is what goes on, right? You have no respect, no fear. Then when the thing happens, then you have to come back. Some people's emotions are so high, they even take too long to repent or come back. Because of their pride. And I ain't talking about no children, I'm talking about grown folk. We got to go. Y'all don't want to talk to me, so I got to go. You've got to learn to hear someone that God puts in your life and your path whose wisdom may totally disagree with everything you plan on doing. You must allow God to order, and the way you do that is you got to take orders from someone he's in. Look how quiet it is. And the reason why I'm not saying your pastor is I ain't stuck on y'all having to obey me. I got enough folk in the world that listen to me. I got a lot of clients. But it's you folk that don't. And then you see who you listening to. And they are as crazy as you. And we're trying to find out who ordered that relationship. I'm not saying God cannot use anybody. Especially when there's nobody to be used at the time. God uses a rooster because there's no human being. God uses a donkey because there wasn't no other body there. God... Even Satan used the serpent because there wasn't no other animal who would let him in. Y'all understand, don't you? But you have to be crazy to go get wisdom from somebody doing worse than you. Ain't no broke person going to tell me what to invest my money in. And you walking outside. All right, let me leave that alone. Now God can use you. That is if no one else is available. Failure is allergic to success. Will you tell somebody that? Because some of y'all get very intimidated when someone doing good points out what you're doing wrong. Now you call that trespassing when that's really God stretching out his hand to you saying, I can bring you up right now if you take advantage of listening. I ain't heard from it. Y'all were screaming earlier. I should repeat that part, whatever that was. Do you know how much further some of us could have been? Come on, y'all. Let's keep it real. If we would have just actually not fake like we listening. Because to take heed means to put action to what you heard. But when a person is rude, they said, I heard you with an attitude. You're not hearing me. You're putting up with me. But let me tell you something. Success don't need no attention. Success needs somebody paying attention. Oh, I hear two or three of you. Are you saying you're successful? By whose definition? We'll talk about that in another series. Let's go. Maybe I should propose the question, how many of you want to do better in less time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Dr. Caesar, you can't do no better. You being humble. How many of us would love to do better and do better in less time? How many believe that it's even possible? How many believe as you do these fake diets that it can happen in 30 days? Look at y'all that didn't put your hand up. Lose 20 pounds in three hours and y'all believe that thing. You got faith for foolishness more than faith for logistics. I'm going to buy that pill, and this is not FDA approved. Going to Botox your lips till one day it just lean, never come back. Not pleased with the body God actually gave you, that if you put some work into it, instead of taking a shortcut, because faith without works is dead. Anything that has no work kills you. I want you to remember that. He and I in love, we never argue, we have everything in common. Wait till that first argument come now. I have not half an hour left, then I bless God for you all. Order my steps. Now... We had a character last week, or we just started this series, and this series is going to go all the way through, uh, let's just say through August. Is that okay? That I build your faith up for at least two months, so, so that by September for the rest of the year, you have a good Thanksgiving, a good Easter, you buy a house for a gift for yourself. You know, can I help you get there? I have not bought me a birthday gift yet. My birthday was the 21st. I've not bought myself a gift yet. I'm waiting on my faith to talk to me. Because what I want, I don't want it to be financially affordable. I want a faith substance to it. Where I'd be like, I didn't pay for this. God just step right on in, touch somebody. See, some of you don't see life like that. God don't actually need your money. All God needs is a man. Shall men give? Yup. All right, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it because I'm trying to help you. You're working hard. At hardly working. <laughs> Tired and sleepy on the job that takes no physical effort. But Abraham was our character. Were y'all here last Wednesday? So let's stick with him. And I made the comment for two folk again who will push me that God refused to start blessing Abraham until he separated from a lot. Who's that? His nephew Lot. They had to separate. God said, I'm no longer talking with you because you took a lot with you. And God blessed some of us to give us little in increments. Because if you give anyone too much too soon, they no longer believe it was faith. They believe they did it themselves. And then you got a group that got it by faith that other folk are jealous of. How you living there and you ain't got no job like me? How you your kids? You ain't even got no baby daddy. I have faith. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. You were raised by father. I was raised by faith. Some of you lost your parent and you lost your faith. That means you never had faith in God, you had faith in your parent. Who had faith in God to raise you right. So you got upset with God who took care of your parents to take care of you. Oh, y'all quiet. 
And now you rather keep your parent instead of being an extension of who raised you and give your children the same faith that your parent. Let's go on. Genesis 12, verses 1 through 8. No more scriptures. Three paragraphs and three words. Mm. Genesis 12. Thank you, Tillman. Genesis 12, verses 1 through 8. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get you out your country. Get away from your kind. Leave your father's house. And go to a land that I will show you. Which means he does not know where he's going. So he steps, his steps are being ordered by God. When you get a car by faith, you don't go on a credit report. You go knowing you ain't supposed to qualify. And if you do get approved, now you talk to your faith and say, do I have a job to pay the car note? Because faith has steps. And if what you like is out of your job salary range, you decrease your faith. That's where you get for next Wednesday. Do everything according to the measure. Because if you take what's outside of your faith, you will face your fate. Some folks don't like it. I feel that if God provided, he'll help us take care of it. You feel wrong. See, I just told you, you are highly emotional. Because the other cultures, especially our European white men who are successful, for only one person will jump, they are never offended when it's time to downsize. But black people, I ain't giving up my house. I ain't selling my car. The white people like, baby, yes, baby. Time to downside, whatever you say, honey. Sometimes you got to go down to come back up. And let me say this for screamers. The harder you bounce a rubber ball, the higher it goes when it hits the ground. And some of y'all been dropped hard. That's why I keep growing. Because when they slam me, they throw something made out of rubber real hard to the ground. I hear you in the middle. He's so arrogant. No, you have no confidence. You hear from a place of immaturity. You live in a dwelling place called offense. I heard Bishop William Murphy coin this phrase. I've heard it from no other person. I hear it all over the world now, but the first person I heard say it was him. I don't plagiarize, I utilize, and I like it. If you know somebody's doing great and you want to do great as them, you don't hate on them. You just look at them and say, same grace. Look at somebody tell them, same grace. When I look at Dr. Shirley Caesar, I say, same grace. Not same problem. Y'all ain't trying. I don't want the problems she had to face to get there. So never ask for what you can endure. So same grace. Not same fate. He says, if you take the steps of verse 1, I'll make thee a great nation. I'll bless thee. I'll make your name great. And then I'll bless you so much that you'll be able to be a blessing. Let me word it again for you that just fell asleep. I'll make you a great nation, which means everything that comes out of you shall succeed. Because right now you have no children and nobody. Y'all, God's already speaking to his future. I'll make, a, I'll make you a great nation. Two, I'll bless you. Then I'll bless you so much that you'll be able to bless others. And then he said, you're going to be a blessing. Then he says in verse 3 for screamers, and them that don't hate on you, I will bless them that bless you. Oh, y'all quiet. 
And unfortunately, I will curse them that curse you. He is saying, for those who ain't screamed all service, when you're doing what I say to offend you, they're directly offending me. As long as you're taking the steps I tell you, you and I are one. But when you step out of that pattern, Let me leave this. And, uh, in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord spoke to him. He did what the Lord said. Lot, y'all missed that. A lot went with him. Look at your neighbor and say, how much can you take with you? But let me leave that alone. You made all the money in the world. You died, guess what? Ain't one penny going with you. God made sure none of us could buy our way into heaven. People going to be here fighting over your money who didn't even like you. They didn't even fight over you. Now this side ain't talking again. My mic don't sound powerful again. I'm going to fire him. But let me talk to this. I told you I'm the greatest man to do it. Yes. Verse 4. So Abram departed. As the Lord spoke to him, Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Tell somebody that's too old to finally get it right. That's too old. You got to wait till you're in your 50s, 60s, and 70s to finally learn your lesson. Let me talk to folk who are not offended. To wait that long to finally get it right, how many more years do you have to enjoy it? You got to get delivered quick enough to enjoy some of the stuff that you accumulated. Or you're going to leave it for all your haters to devour. Some of you look tired because what you want is a prophecy. You heard he's a prophet and you heard... He can preach, but it don't say if any man lack, lack prophecy, let him ask of God. Eh? Y'all got gifts, you just ain't got wisdom. And the dumbest person is a person with a gift that could take care of them and don't know what to do with what they have because of the lack of wisdom. This side in the back still won't clap. We're going to work on y'all. 75 years old. Let me say this about the next verse. And I'm almost ready to stand up because I'm trying to stay in the teach mode. But I want to say this to three of you who are really digesting this. You all see Sarah's pregnancy at 90 years old as a miracle. That's not a miracle. See, once you get into the logos and study it from the right perspective, I'm going to see who jumps. She had the baby late because she laughed. She insulted the word of God. God said, why laughest thou, Sarah? The story is not as good as y'all preach it for three folk because she never thought she would have it. So she went and volunteered another woman. And some of y'all won't admit what you have is through compromise, not through covenant. Because you laughed at the ridiculous way. And you helped God make it make sense. And now what made sense is killing you. Because you got to take care of it, not who told you. 
look at some woman with a witchcraft look looking at me like he think he's smart. Listen, baby. When you feel that, look to the back. And order your steps. Go where you will not be offended because you're so emotionally high that you don't hear God trying to reset your steps. The Bible says this, Tracy. Some people have, the, have a spirit of offense. Sarah's pregnancy was not actually a miracle. It, it, it is a miracle to an extent, but she'd have been had that child if she didn't laugh. If you study it right for one person who is a preacher or preacher to be, you jump up, God will ignite you. She laughed behind his back because she said, I did not laugh. Y'all ain't. And he said, yes, you did. Some of y'all are paying for what you said behind somebody's back, but let me come in. Tell your neighbor to protect your faith. Watch your mouth. All right, I'm about to rock this to closing. Now listen. Abram departed from the Lord as the Lord spoke to him. Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Underscore the word Haran. Y'all know how I'm closing. Underscore the word Haran. Abraham took Sarai, his wife. Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance and all that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went from there, underscore, and landed in a place called Canaan. Elder Jackson, you talking to me? They landed. Some of y'all, after I preach on certain days, I'm going to question you in my office to see whether you really heard me. In the land of Canaan. And after they got into the lane of Canaan, where they came, Abram passed through the land unto the place of, underscore, Sechem. And when he got to Sechem, not Sechem, and when he got to Sechem, they landed, last word, in the plain of Mori. Some say Mori, Mori. Haran, Canaan, I thought y'all wrote it. Shechem, Mori. The Canaanites was in that land. Two verses. The Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give thee what? Before I give you a plan, I'm going to give you some land. Which meant God already created the foundation of what he speaks. Now by faith, you got to learn what to do with what he gave you. He's not going to start it and build it. Left side again, which is the right side when they come through the bank. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he, built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence, last word, and ended up after he built an altar at a mountain on the east of Bethel. And at Bethel, for two folk who are learning, 
he pitched a tent. If I say this and you don't jump, then it means you're offended. Some of you, all your knees are back hurt. That's different. That's allowed. But to the 30 of you who can jump because you're learning, he never pitched a tent in any of these other names, but he lived at church. Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you there in a the minute. He made a residence for himself in Bethel. Look what it said. Having Bethel on the west. Having high on the east. And there he built another altar. And he called upon the name of the Lord. Now I'm about to read my two paragraphs. Give you the def definition of a few words. Send you home because some of you look tired from working. If you weren't working, you shouldn't be this tired. Lazy people don't have a legacy. Would you write that too? Lazy people don't have legacies. If you played with the word and became humorous, a legacy will be leg I see. Some of you don't have a leg to stand on. Because you're too busy taking it flat on your back. You cannot be lazy and leave a legacy or a leg for your children to stand on. Y'all still quiet? My kids ought to work for themselves. That's called ethics. But they shouldn't have to work for themselves. They should be able to take what you started and built upon that. Y'all are quiet now. Chinese folk do it, Asian, European, but black people? Y'all leave us with Section 8. And you leave us with having to do a GoFundMe for your funeral. All of us deserved at one point or another to have a parent who leaves us with a package. Touch them mind and tell them faithful parents leave children with packages. I'm going to stop calling y'all children. I'm going to start calling all y'all young adults. All of you. I'm, I'm, so I'm sorry now. I'm going to call y'all what y'all want to be called. Young adults. Not adults. Y'all get it? All right. If you don't like it now, we can go back to Chile. I would like to show most of you my two paragraphs through biblical scriptures how important it is sometimes, listen, to mark your steps. I didn't say order. Mark them. I'm explaining it, but talk to me. What do I mean by mark your steps? That means to keep record of when something transpired in your life that made major changes. Good or bad. Who was I hanging with? Who did I eat with? Who did I text? You got to be able to trace your steps. Lord, fix it. He said, I'll fix it when you find it. Now let me come back. Lord, fix it. Lord, fix it. If I'm wrong, Dr. Caesar, Elder Carolyn, all of you that are actual doctors or student of the word of God, prophet back there, I call her that Tanya, catch this. When the man was chopping wood to rebuild the school of the prophets, he bought an axe. While chopping, the axe head fell off, y'all don't hear me, into the water. Because of the material axe is made out of, it cannot float. Unless God get in it. Material of steel is meant to drown. Y'all. See, I could preach, but I'm not. But five of you catch this. When he goes to the prophet, the prophet didn't speak to it. He told him it'll come back when you show me where you lost it. And some of you refuse to take responsibility for the steps that you took. Once you take responsibility for that, what you lost will float. I love it. I love it. 
it'll come back to you. Lord, these young adults, it'll come back to you. Hey, hey, boy, I almost spoke in tongues. I said, we're not going to do this. But 10 of you in the middle catch this and jump. And I could have preached it. It is a shame that some of you are not excited about what I'm trying to tell you. Like, it's really a shame, right? That you still live in the city of offense. Instead of recognize God never speaks something if he's not retracing a step. You're not going backwards. You're going back to the place to correct something. And then God will redeem the time. You have to be able to say, this is where I lost it. This is where I lost it. If I come preach for y'all, that'll be my sermon. This is where I lost it. No, not this is where I lost him or her. This is where I lost myself. Right here. And I lost it because I was trying to build something that it was not time to build. Trying to accomplish something that it was not time to accomplish. Your steps must be ordered. Woo! I can't wait till Sunday. Lord, I can't wait. I can't wait. Woo! In the text that we are, no, y'all ain't gonna do it. In the text that we're researching today, there may not seem to be a revelation at all, but as we go deeper into the places versus people's faces, we will discover where some of us reside right now. Do we reside at Harar? Do we reside at what? Do we reside after Canaan in Sikkim? Do we reside in Mori? Do we actually live at Bethel? Each one of these for screamers are steps. I'm talking to talk now. And sometimes you got to stay in the place you don't like. If he ordered your step to be there, you don't move from that step until your next orders come. And you don't have next orders directly from an unspoken voice. God will put in someone that he's deputized a word for your life. If any of your kids just go get married at 19, 21 and they can, you will as a parent be offended. You'll be like, you married? To who? And they have the right to say, I'm grown and of legal age. That's what y'all doing to God in church. Same thing. Same thing. My kids have the right to get married. They who they want to. I have the freedom not to go to the wedding. Oh, I'm definitely not paying for it. I don't take a part in nothing that I have not been uh, sought about my wisdom. You get, through, you get to my wealth through my wisdom. But he's your son. And that's right. No, he's her husband. He ain't my son no more. He's her husband. He can't come to me to pay their mortgage. No, no. No, ma'am. No, sir. Because these are steps you should have took. Oh, y'all. You skipped some steps. I got to raise my grandchild and that's your baby? Oh, you skipped some steps. That child can't stay here past three days. No. I got things to do. 
I'm old. I'm checking out. Look at somebody. I'm glad he ain't my grandfather. I ain't got no grandkids, so I'm good. All my kids are 40 and older and down, and I ain't got no grandkids. That's what they told me. That's what I believe. Let me give one more paragraph and then just these words, I promise. But when I read this paragraph, it's coming from a seminarian perspective. So I only look for a certain group to embrace it. It's short. Though lacking empirical evidence, empirical evidence, faith acts as a powerful motivator, shaping personal meaning and guiding actions. I knew y'all were going to say amen to the right and left. Across cultures and religion, faith fosters hope. Oh. Faith also provides comfort in the face of uncertainty. Faith also incites certain individuals to pursue goals deemed impossible by reasoning alone. While the, na while the nature of faith objects may vary, faith's objects may vary, its ability to shape human experience remains consistent. Whenever your faith is increasing, your ideas are changing. Your priorities shift. You don't care about a new car. I just need to get to work. When faith starts moving, it does not break you. It starts making you so that when others see you, they see steps. The way you come out of a thing, you become the steps for another person to take. How did you do it? How long did it take you? Now, how long did it take God? How long did it take you? What did you do at this time? How old were you? Some of you are not faithful nor full of faith, so nobody can use you as steps. Your story is too sad. It's loaded with despondency and despair. Then you have the nerve at the end to say, but God is good. Man, hush that. Don't put no butter on God. The best part I like in that paragraph was faith fosters hope. Faith, the substance of things hoped for, evidence. Faith, the substance of what things what? See, faith fosters hope. When your hope is ready to give up, faith says, come here. Faith is talking to your hope every day if you let it. But if you run out of faith, you're going to lose your hope. Y'all not to... Faith... All right, they didn't... Now it's the middle. It's these grown-ups now. It's these grown children. I wish, and it's a wish, that all of us that's been saved 20, 30, 40 years had enough to show the next generation this is what God does. I hate that your story still looks the same. I'm blessed. I'm using reality because she said, I'm blessed to know Pastor Caesar. I'm blessed to know her group. I'm blessed that if I wanted to, she'd be like, well, come on over to the house and eat. I'm blessed to have access. Access is a blessing. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them access is a blessing. I've been to her church numerous times. I've been in her office numerous times. I've had chances, but I walk in and out because I respect who she is. I never get familiar over 20 years. No, no, that's me. Some of y'all take advantage too early, but I never do that. See, I'm giving you wisdom now. 
but I do know that if something happened to me and I couldn't talk and I was on a re respirator and Carolyn heard that, she would tell Dr. Caesar, we got to go see Prophet Hall. I can visibly see Pastor Caesar looking at me and I have not hung with her and saying, boy, you better not die right now. God ain't through with you. I can hear her probably singing for the nine months after just sing to me. Oh, y'all, just sing to me till I get up. Oh, yeah. No. Nope. Anybody that has faith for you when they're in your presence, they find hope. If a certain person call you at a certain time, either they make your day worse or, or they make that day much better. And you be like, I'm just glad you called. What's wrong? Nothing. Because faith fostered hope. Now for Romans, for three folk will jump, hope maketh not a shame. Faith will not leave you in failure if you listen to wisdom. Now I'm going to close. I'm going to use four words. I want you to underscore the four. We're going to lead. We are going to leave three other words that I didn't mention. We're going to leave Hebron and Mamre and Haran for Sunday. I'm going to take Canaan, Sikkim, Sikkim, Sishim, Mori, and Bethel. Moray and Bethel. Here I go. These are the steps where he had to stop. You needed to write that with your crazy self. There are certain steps you don't pass through. You have to check in for a little while. Some of you want to keep walking through till you get where you're going. No, you got to make some stops. Y'all didn't like that. Got to make some stops. You may not like how long you got to be there, but that ain't your business. That's the business of the one that's ordering your steps. How long I got to go through this? Shut up. And walk it out. Mark it. The word Canaan in its original definition, here go to four words, catch it, means humiliation. I done gave out six sermons. Y'all don't know it because I wrote six on here with six topics. Humiliation. Sikkim means to turn back or to look back. Moray means teacher. Bethel means house of God. I'm closing. I'm going to go through one more. Normally when folk are tired in church because black people don't like learning. But as soon as we leave, we get hungry and wake up till 2 in the morning. That's what happens. We're normally tired when it's time to listen and work. But wake up to eat at times when we should stay asleep. <laughs> You got four more hours and you can eat. And, but I know I need something right now. How can I say it? I've been there. Last night, I had a Fritos attack. A Frito corn chip attack. And I don't even eat Fritos. I walked in my kitchen. Went to bed. Watched ghosts. Y'all ain't talking to me. In the middle of ghosts, I said Fritos. And when I grabbed the Frito small bag, the Lay's potato chip said, grab me too. All right, y'all ain't never been there. That's right. And you mix them in the same bag. I'm just trying to help people. And when you eat half of them, you be like, I should, I should stop. But I done started, I might as well finish them. Then you close with water like it was a healthy snack. Let me have a bottle. <laughs> Woo! 
Here's how we close this until Sunday. Ten of you will catch this and you will jump. If it means anything to you, I'll know that we've done well. Number one, the first step God wants you to mark when you have faith is you must survive being humiliated. You need faith for humiliation. Now, my young adults clapped and my old youngins ain't say nothing, but let me help you again. Because some of you for years are still in humiliation. That's why you speak in tongues so much, dance all the time, because you're covering where you are. You're humiliated. Don't you ever use Sarah's story of even if God waits until I'm a hundred, his word came to pass. Don't you ever. Don't. What? You're admitting that you've been laughing behind his back for a long time. As long as he bring it to pass, he's not a liar. He wanted to lie if it didn't bring it to pass. God can't lie. If anybody lied, it's you and I. Dr. C's, whenever y'all ready to go, please do that. My ushers will see you through any door. Go eat, wake me up. I'll do lunch, catch you at whatever restaurant you will be. I won't name your favorite one, but I busted y'all there yesterday. But let me come back here. Canaan. Humiliation. You've got to get through the part where you have to be able to still serve God when you want to hide. Oh, it got quiet now. If you can't worship after you made a mistake, you are illiterate. You are ignorant. Because your mistake is going to show in a little while. So you might as well show your mistake. That I'm going to still praise God through Canaan. Through humiliation what humiliation does Jonathan Vickers what humiliation does to an average Christian for a screamer is it makes you want to turn back now you're in a place called sickum Now, I'm naming places so you can find out where you still live in. I'm tired. I'm leaving. They ain't never got to talk to me. You at Sikkim. And you at Sikkim because you couldn't handle humiliation. Then you come back dressing and smiling like you're actually happy to throw folk off. When the truth is, you're not doing that well. I can't believe God allowed me to go through this. No, 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 no. It wasn't God. After you survive Sikkim, now this is where I do want screaming because this is for me tonight. The only way out of Sikkim is you got to be taught. You got to be in a place to listen when you don't want to listen because you're in something that you got yourself into and your humiliation will keep you stuck. Now, if I close with this, you don't jump because we done. And if I close with this, you don't jump. Y'all have failed me tonight, and I'm fine. But third of you catch this. You can't be taught without a teacher. That means God has to let somebody know your business, where you live, what you're about, who's not jealous but tired of seeing you in that condition. And you have to be trusting enough to hold your peace, sit back, 
and say, blessed are the feet of them. Thank God that he ordered somebody's step to step into my life to help me step out of what's trying to kill me. Humiliation. We're closing. I want you, I want you tomorrow to study in depth on your own time what humiliation does. I want you to stop blaming people for what humiliation actually did. And humiliation in the back that won't talk has no power until you open the door. You let somebody like Lot go with you where they should not have gone. Yeah. See, you got quiet again. And God said, now when it gets out, it ain't me. You took certain people to stops that you should not have taken them. And these people determined how humiliated you would be. Now, 10 of you tried to avoid humiliation by making your presence absent. Humiliation going to find you anywhere you go. If you can't face it, God won't fix it. Will you tell somebody that if you can't face it? Bishop, as we close, can I ask you something? Bishop, sure. You want to ask me this? I'll ask me for you. But 10 of you talk to me, and that is, have you ever been humiliated? Bishop, you don't understand what people do to you in this day. What? Am I in another day? Bishop, you don't understand how treacherous people are. What? Let me talk to folk who got a mouth. Bishop, have you ever wanted to hurt somebody? What? Now, Dr. Caesar going to get me the back. You really wanted to be violent? Yes, ma'am. I'm from Brownsville, Brooklyn. I'm the eldest of nine and all my siblings are entertainers in secular world. What? Have you ever been to the place, not that I'm asking, but I'm seeing who's listening, where what humiliated you is still in your presence? And acting like they had nothing? And God tells you, do nothing but stay there. Because this is about your faith. And if you act outside of it, it will be your fate. Don't make your enemies right about you. They're waiting for you to go crazy so they can tell everybody, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? They're trying to make some of you who are faithful, full of faith, emotional, average Christians. Tell somebody on the left and right, I am not your average Christian. I am, and look at me, sons, I'm not. What my feelings are telling me to do, my faith is totally against. Now y'all missed it because you didn't let me finish. I gave you four words. Y'all let me stop at three because you're crazy. But this is for the ten who will jump. The only way I'll never do what my feelings want me to do, I got to pitch a ten at Bethel. I got to go to church as much as possible and hear a rational voice Teach me out of myself. I need to be taught out of me.
We are all natural beings. Let's close. Get, get a seed ready and make it healthy. We all are natural beings. But this is for three, what we call arrogant, what, which is really confident Christians who will scream. Yes. We all are natural beings. But when you get in something that will kill most of the natural, you come out supernatural. Yes. And a lot of folk are literally upset that you're super. For those who didn't scream, you're so super, you supersede. You follow? And they're upset that the way they came out of it does not match the way God brought you out of it because you abandoned your faith. And I stayed where my faith told me to remain. Let me say this to one person in the back, my goddaughter, my new fine member, and sir, and three of you over here. Stop running from it and run towards it. David did not run from Goliath. He ran to it. If you keep running from it, you'll be a fugitive and never be free. You got to face it. You have to face it. Give God an opportunity to let his thing finish what it starts. God does not stop a man from making his own decisions. Therefore, he will not help that man when he makes a bad decision, get out of it unless he chooses to. I left my father's house, Dr. Deborah, and we're getting a seat ready. I left my father's house twice. Twice. One time because I was a little ignorant and I was going through my teenage thing and I started growing some hair under my chin. All right, y'all don't want to hear that. And I never seen my father as a thug. He'd been saved all my life, living right, doing his thing. And I never seen him yell at us. Of course, he's beat us, he's chastised us, but I never saw his thug side until a side of me came out that had to meet a side that they never saw before. You know? See, some people don't know. The side they're showing you, you got a side for it. But faith keeps telling you they need to see me, not you. They need to see me, not you. And my father... Handled his business, Carol. I don't remember when I woke up. I don't. And I was in a gang and I studied martial arts. My hand to God. I'm pretty decent, but I believe God empowers parents to always be able to whoop their child's behind. And my father just... He was Jackie Chan or somebody. My father just... I woke up, my brother Aaron was on the side. Dad almost killed you. So my younger siblings didn't disobey the father because they saw how the father treated disobedience. And sometimes God has to use some of you as an example to bring fear back into the lives of other people like, don't play with me. I woke up though. I was glad to wake up. Lip was swollen. But I was glad I woke up. Went through the phases that y'all went through. I hate him. Said all them things behind his back. Still ate his food. Still slept in his bed. Y'all ain't talking. Still borrowed his car. That was wrong. The second time I left, Never been back. My father looked at me, whatever our dialogue was, for one person who cursed me, and he said, now, Todd, listen, I love you. I love you. Yeah. He hugged me and everything. Kiss me, boy. He said, I want the best for you. He said, but tonight, if you walk out of here, don't come back. And I took the love of the father for granted because I said he said that before. Look how quiet y'all are now. And look at some of the rookies. God would never do that. His mercy endureth forever. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
I was about to walk out of the house and my mother said, she from Costa Rica, Todd, come here. I walked in the room. He says, now, baby, are you leaving tonight? I said, yeah. Did you hear your daddy? Yeah, but we can't get along. She said, well, you better get as much as you can out your room. Oh, y'all, <laughs> she said, because, oh, y'all missed it. She said, if you leave right now, you can't come back. Well, what you want me to do? She says, number one, fix your face. Oh, I can't get no help now. Change your tone. Yelling, oh, oh. She said, go back first, tell your daddy sorry, then go take a shower. Go to bed, relax. When you wake up tomorrow, don't talk too much. When you see him, say good morning. And if you want to really live here in peace, ask him, is there anything you want me to do? Oh, it just, see, y'all ain't never heard this. No, no, we ain't talking about being put out of the church. We talking about being put out of his presence. Because some of you are in church, but out of his presence. And when I left peaceably, Charles, I left my dad's house peaceably. I had never been so miserable all the days of my life not being in the presence of my father. Calling him was not the same. Y'all ain't talking to me. Seeing him at church was not the same. I miss, let's watch TV. Todd, how's life doing? I even miss the punch in the face. And I had to do the same thing to my firstborn. I only knew to do what was done to me. My son said, I'm going to get you. I said, all right, this is that Jackie Chan moment. You're about to get just what I got. And believe it or not, he and I became that close like I did with my dad. I thought that boy would hate me all his life. Calls me king now. I ain't used to that. What's a king? And every time he said, I'd be thinking about how much money he wants. But when somebody knows you're being nice, not because you always want something, but because you appreciate how they coach you through steps, that's the best feeling in the whole wide world. Am I right? Everybody wants somebody in their life that don't want nothing from them but a little wisdom. On Sunday, I'm going to, through the grace of God, and don't take this wrong, but I'm going I'm to have me some church without y'all Sunday. Because I got some things that I want God to do, and I want him to do it quick, fast, and in a hurry. And if that's you, you ought to jump up and shout yes. Remain standing. Let's get our offerings ready. Maybe you all have never recognized this. Maybe you have deacons. I hope y'all have maybe two of the mothers and five of the young adults. Y'all can scream at us. Have you ever seen people be a member of a church and never brag about how good God is until they leave? All of a sudden, I'm blessed. What? And some of y'all shock me because you be liking it and thumbs up. Y'all, y'all, y'all crazy. Y'all are real, tink, tink. Y'all are tink, tink for real. That y'all be putting thumbs up on disrespect. Like y'all really crazy. That's how I know who's next because I watched you. You next because you don't know how to help people get out of a thing. You help them get deeper in it. I'm never going to like what is aimed negatively at anyone. Because that is not maturity. I saw someone, don't care who it is, they insulted Tracy Cleveland online. I know y'all saw it because some of you thumbs up. I saw you.
And for the first time, I looked at who thumbs up and said, I feel you, girl. Amen. And I said, woo. Come on, Bishop. Tracy just had a baby. Hold on. Let me stop because I'm going to see who follows me in faith. Tracy has a faithful husband. Stop. <laughs> Tracy and her husband have great jobs. Stop. Tracy and her husband go on five vacations a year. Stop. Tracy and her husband. Oh, yeah. The people that were saying it don't have half of what God has allowed Tracy to possess. Whenever faith takes you to your highest level, you will, without wanting to, insult someone. Because what they said about you is not true. That's why I tell this church as your leader, don't respond. Don't talk about them behind their back. If you know their number and you feel like God's leading you, go to them. Social media is not the place to vent your emotions. I've seen people get online. I want to say sorry to anyone I hurt. No, no. Call them. And you know who you are. No, no. If you don't do that, you're going to be stuck in Sikkim. You'll never make it to the place of being taught. And you'll never be able to pitch your tent. I'm against what I'm about to tell you all. Then I want to see your offerings, not their mouth, but I hope you give well. But that's this. I don't believe anybody can remain in me remain an effective Christian without a ministry or a church. No, no. Don't clap because they're going to get mad at you. I, I, but I said don't clap. Because we're in a day where a spirit from hell is telling people that church is no longer necessary. That's a demon. And the few of you in here tonight, at one time you said it. Because you were sick at a person or a group and took it out on the church of God. The church has done nothing to you. Now, whoever's a member of the church that did it, you ought to be Christian enough to talk to them. Or y'all take it in the bag. Oh, y'all ain't used to the thug part, huh? Go handle your business. Come back to church, say thank you, Jesus, and praise him with. But to let a demon make you hold a church responsible. On this note, you can say amen. And some of you that have been brought into some of this, you got to hear me. You've got to be mature enough to know what to stay away from. And what not to address. A mannequin, better known as a dummy, has no life till you dress it. Soon as you put something on it, it becomes attractive. I don't address certain things. And I'm human. I feel it, the pain and all. But if I do, I might be stuck in Canaan for the rest of my life. He died because of humiliation. He died because he went back. With all them 40 years of preaching, that man died because he couldn't make it to a voice. And he couldn't find a voice that could help him get to Bethel. Y'all got some rethinking to do, don't you? Look at somebody and tell them I'm worth being jealous of. 
and I'm worth being verbally assaulted. Because I'm just that guy. I'm that gal. I'm just that anointed. And, and the higher you go, the more attached you should look. That's, that's this Christian walk. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. It's all good. Just find a group that can heal you after somebody hurts you. Good company is a medicine. Will you tell somebody, help me get medicated, will you? Bad company gets you high. You'll catch that next week. Bad company is a narcotic. Good company is a healing. Get your offerings, whatever amount you choose. Let's come to the uh, altar and let's give even with our phones. We walk. We do not get comfortable on God in this church at all. You might get healed from a disease.